to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today for subscribing on this channel and for commenting for all your support thank you so much if it's your first time welcome to my channel and my name is Daphne and I'm very excited to have you today make sure that you do subscribe if you're not subscribed and also click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on the videos posted and also make sure if you are on Instagram <laughs> make sure that you do follow on Instagram click that follow button and also the notifications button okay so welcome to wisdom wednesdays we're back again i'm very excited for the word that the lord has for you today and my prayer is always that you may know him and that you may know who you are in him you may find your strength you may be revived by this word and that the spirit of god will minister to you and change your life so let's go straight into the word of god let's go to the book of john chapter 2 verse 1 to 10 which says on the third day there was a wedding in cana of galilee and the mother of jesus was there now both jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding and when they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine Jesus said to her woman what does your concern have to do with me my hour has not yet come his mother said to his to the servants whatever he says to you do it now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece Jesus said to them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said to them draw some out now take it to the master of the feast and they took it and when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now Glory to God, glory to God. I don't know what season you are in your life today. Sometimes in life we feel like God is not really hearing us. God is not listening to my prayers. God is not really answering the desire of my heart. Why is it that God is not really paying attention to me in this season? But I want to reassure you that God is always paying attention to you. God is always listening to you. God loves you. And one of the things that we can be deceived in thinking in times when we don't really get what we are desiring, we don't really have the clarification, the answered prayer, and the solutions that we're looking for, we begin to be deceived by the enemy to think that God doesn't really love us. And sometimes we can begin to do a lot of things to kind of earn the love of God, yet the love of God has already been given to you and I through Jesus Christ, through the work of the cross. We cannot earn God's love anymore. It was given to us. He loved us before we were saved. He loved us when we we're still yet sinners. He loved us before we accepted him, before we knew him. So how can we earn the love of God? By doing more, by doing more prayer, more fasting, more reading the word you see there's nothing wrong with praying nothing wrong with fasting there's nothing wrong with you studying the word but what is the motivation behind it what is the foundation of you doing those things is it out of ignorance ignorance that says I have to earn the love of God so the more that I study the Bible the more that God is going to love me the more that I fast the more that God is going to pay attention to me why do you do the things that you do is it out of ignorance out of a lack of knowledge and today I pray that you may find the knowledge that you need in your situation today the situation that you're saying God where are you God I cannot hear you God are you really seeing what I'm going through right now so here we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is invited to a, a wedding a marriage and you know weddings are very exciting moments in life weddings are moments of joy moments of celebration weddings are a good thing marriage is a wonderful thing and so the author and creator of marriage is invited to this marriage, the ceremony, the one who created it from the beginning, the one who fashioned it and established it and created the first man and woman, the one who blessed it in Genesis chapter one. He is invited. God who became flesh, the word of God that became flesh is invited to this marriage. Isn't it wonderful how God is involved even in the small mundane things of life? even in the things that celebrate day-to-day -day life. 
in your day-to-day -day way of doing things, your day-to-day -day behavioral patterns, God sees it and God still cares about it. Sometimes as Christians, we think God doesn't really care about, you know, who I'm going to marry. He doesn't really care about my wedding date. He doesn't really care about the kind of flowers that I'm going to choose. Those things are too small for God to care about. But I want you to know that God cares about that. So they chose the wedding dresses, the bridegroom's, uh, the bridegroom's clothes. They chose the colors, the food. And the word of God is present at this wedding. The word of God can be present in your life today. In the small things of your day-to-day -day life. The word of God can begin to penetrate in the things that seem too small for him to penetrate. The things that seem too light. You can begin to invite Jesus Christ in those areas of your life that seem insignificant. Areas of your life that seem unimportant. Areas of your life that seem too, too deep to invite the Spirit of God. This thing in your life seems like it's already gone off. There's no hope for it. You can begin to invite the word of God. So the word of God, Jesus Christ, is invited us to this wedding along with the mother of Jesus. And so they ran out of wine at this wedding. They've run out of wine. And the mother of Jesus is concerned about the things that have to do with the celebration of this wedding. This mother of the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned about the laughter and the joy, the source of the laughter and the source of the joy, which is through this wine. The source of being merry has run out and Mary is concerned about it. So she begins to speak to the Lord Jesus Christ concerning her concern. What are you concerned about today? Does it seem too small? Does it seem ungodly? Does it seem not very religious? Does it seem it's not really fitting in the traditions of the church? Your concerns seem to be something that other people around you are not really concerned about. So you feel inferior to go to the Father to begin to speak about these things that are burning in your heart. I want you to know that today you can go to the Father and speak to Him about anything. There's nothing too small, nothing too silly, nothing too foolish, nothing too ordinary to speak to your father about. He's your father. He's your father. And you can tell him anything. So there's a relationship between the mother of Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a relationship with the father. You are his child. You are a child of the king of kings. You are not an ordinary person. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you are not ordinary. That's one of the things that you need to understand in your walk. That you're not an ordinary person. And you need to get to a place where you understand the relationship. 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 That was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. The relationship between you and the Father. You see, we don't have to go through Moses anymore to get to the Father. Because Jesus Christ has paid the price. He laid down his life that you and I can find the way to the Father, for he is the only way. We don't have to go through Moses and Elijah to get to the Father. You don't have to go through your parents, child of God. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you confessed him with your heart, you have the way to the Father. And so there's nothing too small, nothing too big, nothing too hard to ask him. There's nothing that you need to worry about as you go boldly to the throne of the Father. Like Esther, you begin to be bold and you go freely and every day you're welcome. You don't need a scepter to be risen up because it's already risen up that scepter through the blood of Jesus Christ. So you can go anytime into the throne room. And so there's a relationship between a mother and a son, there's a relationship. This is why she can go and speak about things like wine. This is why she can go and speak about things that have to do with day-to-day -day celebrations, day-to-day -day enjoyments, day-to-day -day things of life. There are things that you and I enjoy to do that don't necessarily have to do with the pulpit. They don't necessarily have to do with the church. They don't have to do with a fasting and praying. For example, I, I like shoes. I, I like clothes. I like fabrics. These are things that I like. They have nothing to do with the pulpit, nothing to do with these Wisdom Wednesdays, but it's things that I like. What do you like, child of God? These things that you like that are in your heart, passions and desires that you can speak to the Father about because he cares about those things. So she says, hey, they have no more wine. They've run out of the source that is causing them to be so joyful. They've run out of the source that is bringing that merriness in their spirit, in their heart. 
They've run out of the source. And so the Lord Jesus Christ says, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And so when you begin to read this, you begin to wonder what hour is, is the Lord speaking about? And why does he answer in such a way? Why does he say woman? Woman and not mother. Why does he say my hour? What hour is he speaking about? You see, the word of God is present at this wedding. And the source of joy at this wedding is wine. The source of merriness is wine. The source of laughter is wine. But you see, Jesus Christ is concerned about the things that have to do with the kingdom. Things that have to do with getting the bride back to himself. Things that have to do with paying the cost through his blood. And so when he says, my hour has not yet come, he's speaking about the hour on the cross. He's speaking about the ninth hour on the cross. You see, while the wedding is on the third day and they're celebrating, he's also thinking about the third day when he will rise from the dead and we will begin to celebrate eternal life in him. So when the Lord Jesus Christ is answering her, He's speaking about the wine, the wine that is the Holy Spirit that fills you and I and we look like we are drunk when we are filled by him. He's speaking about the wine that fills the disciples on the day of Pentecost and the apostles when they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they begin to look like they are drunk. This is the wine that he's thinking about at this time. He's thinking about the hour when he gives up himself for you and I. He's thinking about the marriage that has to do with eternity. He's thinking about eternal life. So when he begins to answer the mother of Mary, she doesn't understand what he's saying. Child of God, sometimes we are praying prayers to the Father. There's things that we are desiring that are really things that have to do with our day-to-day -day life and there's nothing wrong with that. God cares about that. This is why he's invited to the wedding. But yet when God answers you and I, we don't understand what he's saying because God is spirit and he's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. And so when he answers us, sometimes he's answering from a place of eternity. He's answering from a place of his kingdom and his righteousness. And we cannot catch it because our minds are not spiritually minded. We cannot catch it because we are not spiritually minded. So when he says woman, he's saying my hour of suffering, my hour of drinking the cup of wrath, the cup of wrath which you will not have to go through because I am going to drink that cup. The cup when I will make that decision in the garden of Gethsemane. I will make the decision. So my time to make that decision yet. That will begin to be an overflowing wine that will flow and overflow in the hearts of men and women. Children, boys and girls. The hour has not yet come for new wine to be given. You see, the Lord is always thinking about eternity. Maybe there's something that you're asking him today. You desire this physical wine. There's a joy and a celebration that you need in your life today. Maybe it's just a physical thing like a car. There's a joy and a celebration that you need in your life. Something that is temporary, but the Father, the Father is mindful of things that are eternal. And he wants you to catch up with this mindset. Not that he doesn't want to give you that thing that is temporary. The thing that gives temporary joy, but there is greater than temporary joy. And now you and I, we're in this new covenant where we have access to things that are eternal, but we need to catch up with the mindset of God. He says, my hour has not yet come. Why do you speak of new wine? Why do you speak of a new covenant? The time has not yet come. God is so God is spirit. And so sometimes when he's speaking to you concerning day-to-day -day things, we don't get it. He's saying do it that way, but we don't understand it because we are so focused on the little things that are so temporary. We're so focused on things that come today and tomorrow they are gone. We're so focused on the grass that is here today and tomorrow it is thrown in the furnace. So concerned about spring today and then tomorrow it's going to be autumn. Child of God, what is your concern? What is your desire? In desiring the things that are temporary, are you also mindful of the things that are eternal?
because God is eternal and when he speaks he speaks from a place of eternity the mother of Jesus doesn't understand what he's saying you see there's a relationship but there's no understanding of the things that are eternal compared to the things that are physical but yet the mother of Jesus does something that is really amazing she believes despite what she has heard she uses a faith despite what he's saying. Doesn't make sense what he's saying to me. He's telling me about things that are eternal and I don't understand what he's saying, but I'm going to use my faith concerning this thing that is temporary. I'm going to use my faith concerning this need that I have. Is it a car? You need a car to go to work. You, can, you cannot continue like this in a pandemic, so you really need a car. And so you begin to use your faith like the mother of Mary. It doesn't make sense. But you see, faith pleases God. Faith, your faith will please God. It's not about a relationship here. It's not about the influence that she has over a son. You see, there's a certain influence that a mother has over her child. There's a certain influence that a spouse has over their spouse. There's a certain influence that children have in their parent. It's not about influence. It's not about titles. It's not about relationship, but it's about faith. Faith will please God. You see, in the past, maybe you're like David. You are winning wars and doing all kinds of things. But today, you need to use your faith concerning that thing that you really desire today. So she uses a faith. And she says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. You see, when you begin to move in the realm of faith, there begins to be certain kind of spiritual wisdom, supernatural wisdom on what to say. Supernatural wisdom on what to do. Wisdom is the how to do it, why you do it, and when you will do it. So there's a supernatural wisdom that is upon her lips. I mean, she scans her environment and she finds the things that are conducive for the miracle to take place at this wedding. Can you look at your environment today? and find the things that are conducive for your miracle and concentrate on the things that are conducive for your miracle the things that will usher in your miracle today you have to focus on the things that are going to usher the miracle even though the miracle is concerning the things that have to do with our day-to-day -day life because yes we are in this body so there are things that have to do with our day-to-day -day life can you find those things the mother of Jesus she scanned the environment and she found the servants being conducive to the working of this miracle. And the Lord Jesus Christ is involved in all of this. So she says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. There are people in your life today that are not conducive for your miracle. They are not right for the miracle. And the miracle is not going to take place until you separate from your lot. Separate from those people that are not conducive for your miracle. There are certain miracles that take place and they won't take place when you are in a certain environment. There are certain doors that have to open in your life today. Certain doors that have to open in March. But because of your environment and the kind of people in your environment, you cannot find the conducive servants that are going to help the word of God to usher out the miracle of wine. And so... Fortunately for Mary, there were servants, there were people there that made it possible for the word of God to speak to them. And when the word of God is spoken to those servants, the miracle can take place. And so using her faith, she says, whatever he says to you, do it. And so this is no longer about the new wine. This is no longer about the things that have to do with eternity. This is about the situation right now. And so sometimes we go to certain people, we are asking for solutions for the situation right now, but they are telling you, hey, you know, uh, if you just fast for, for, for 40 days, you know, the miracle will take place. They are telling you things that don't have to do with the situation that needs you right now. You are at a dead end. And you're speaking to people, but they don't understand how you need a now miracle. This was a now miracle. And today we want to pray. We are going to pray. Some of you, you need a now miracle. As long as you believe, if you have faith, like Mary had faith, if you just believe, despite not understanding, faith doesn't need to understand what is taking place before 
it hopes on the things that are not yet seen faith is a substance of things that are hoped for you don't have to understand what you are hoping for you don't have to understand why and you know when and how faith is a substance of things hoped for it's an evidence of things that are not seen you don't have to see it to believe you just have to believe in your heart believe that there will be new wine in your life this new wine is a solution for a temporary problem remember we are eternal our life is in Christ and we have eternal life through Jesus Christ you need a now miracle in your day-to-day -day life if you just believe and so there were six water pots of stone and the servants had to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to tell them what to do and it's the word of God that made them to find the water pots it's the word of God that made them to locate these water pots the word of God can help you to locate the areas of your life that will make the miracle come to pass and sustain sustain the miracle you have to sustain the miracle you don't want to get to a place where you're, you're, you keep begging you keep begging that's not a miracle where you're where you are on breadcrumbs constantly on breadcrumbs you need to get to a place where you get to the loaves of bread you cannot survive on breadcrumbs that is not a miracle stop lying to yourself that I am happy eating breadcrumbs you're not happy you're lying to yourself stop confusing contentment with lies don't lie to yourself just be open with the father and say father I'm not happy with these breadcrumbs I have faith to get to loaves I have faith to dwell in the realm of loaves of bread father I know that you've paid the price for me you've given me everything your word of your word says you've blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ so why should I be content with breadcrumbs and yes we grow from glory to glory but if you believe that you're ready for loaves of bread then you are ready for loaves of bread if you believe you still are you still want to be around the breadcrumbs you still want to eat breadcrumbs for the next five years fair enough that is what you believe it's all about our belief because the Bible tells us that we have every every spiritual blessing so it's all about your mindset do you believe that you deserve loaves of bread because the bread of life was given to you do you believe that you have access to those things of day-to-day -day life that are like loaves of bread and you don't have to survive on scraps anymore you don't have to survive on breadcrumbs anymore you don't have to lie to people that you're happy living on breadcrumbs and you're hoping that today I'll get five more breadcrumbs because I always have two breadcrumbs hopefully they'll give me five more little scraps tomorrow you're hoping and living on the currency of man currency of the flesh but the father wants you to live in the realm of a currency of faith that produces things that overflow in your life because he has paid the price for it don't listen to those people that say you don't deserve it your you know humility is struggling you have to struggle in this area of your life you know I, I had to struggle to get there that's their reality it's not your reality that doesn't make you a better Christian because you're struggling to get by day to day more unless it is to suffer for his name but if you're suffering concerning breadcrumbs and things that have to do, to do with day-to-day -day life, things that have nothing to do with his name, nothing to do with, he, with your faith, why are you suffering so much? Is it to do with your faith or is it to do with day-to-day -day life? The mother of Jesus is bold. She says there's no more wine. We are desiring wine at this wedding. We need to laugh. We need to have a bit of joy in this area of our life. We don't have to beg in this area of our life because the word of God is present. The Lord Jesus Christ is present in this area of my life. So I don't need to beg for this kind of joy. The joy, yes, it has to do with temporary things, but I deserve to laugh a little bit more. I deserve to smile a little, a little bit more. Why should I go through what my parents went through? Why should I go through what my neighbor is going through? when I have the Word of God present in my life. So the Word of God begins to speak to the servants and he says, fill the water pots with water. Fill yourself with more of myself. Fill and that your mindsets may be renewed and you will know who you are and the truth will set you free. Sometimes the reason why we have such a low self-esteem and we have this false humility 
that has nothing to do with real humility is because we don't really know who we are. We have not really become less that he may become more in our mindsets. So we walk with a fallen mindset, a mindset of a servant and not a mindset of a son. Sons are led by the spirit. Sons know who they are. Sons are kings. A mindset of a king. We are kings and priests for our father here on earth. And so there's a domain, there's a rulership and dominion that we are meant to exercise. But because we are like servants and low self-esteem and false humility, woe me, I don't deserve this. I, I think I need to suffer to look so humble. I, you know, humility, you have to really suffer and you have to beg. That is a lie of Satan. You are a king. Kings walk in rulership. Kings walk in dominion. Kings exercise power. You are a king and a priest. This is who we are in this realm. So how dare you walk like a pauper? How dare you walk like a slave? How dare you walk like a slave to the system in this dominion that you have here on earth? We are slaves of Christ, but we are not slaves of the world. And so the word of God speaks to them. Fill the water pots, fill your vessels, fill your minds with the word of God, that you may be spiritually minded, that you may have the mind of Christ. Yes, your spirit is perfect, but your mindset has to catch up with who you are in Christ. And when you know who you are, you will walk as you are. You will exercise the power of who you are. You will walk in the dominion, the favor, the blessing of God because it's already upon your life. You don't need to beg anymore. So they fill the water pots. And he said, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And when the master of that feast had drunk um, this water which had been turned into wine, he says something that is really intriguing. He says, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Do you know why he says this? It's because this is just a testimony of a better covenant that was to come. You see, the old covenant was not perfect, but this new covenant that we are in, this new wine is better than the old wine. This new wine is more excellent, more perfect than the old wine. This wine was paid for not by the blood of bulls and goats, by the blood of the lamb without blemish. And you and I, we are now in this covenant under the master of the feast. And so the word of God is like eating at a feast. With the word of God, we become filled with every good thing. In our mindset, we begin to change. We begin to be renewed because of what we are eating. Child of God, I want to pray for you today. Do you have faith? That the Father cares about the little things of life, day-to-day -day life. Do you believe that you can invite the Word of God to every supper, every dinner, every feast, every little celebration of your life, every little plan in your life? Maybe you're planning to celebrate. You haven't even started celebrating, but you don't even have the wine. You have nothing to show at this feast that you want to have in your life. There are small little feasts small little gatherings. You want people to also see that you have done something in your life, but you have nothing to show. Today, the oh my God, today the Father is giving you wisdom. Wisdom. You will show people, you begin to show people things that you're going to build. You're going to begin to build things in your life and people are going to come and celebrate. There's this transference of wisdom that is coming upon your life. Ideas, 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 creativity. You're saying, I don't know who I am. I don't really know what, what I need to do. But as you continue to grow, the wisdom, the wisdom that is put in your life, creativity, those gifts will begin to come alive. Those things are inside of you. And there's grace, grace coming upon your life for speed. Grace for acceleration in those things coming to pass because of the time. And he's renewing your years. Just, just believe. Just believe. He's renewing your years. That's why there's speed. He's renewing the times of loss. He's renewing the things that happened in the past. He's renewing and overriding those things. And so the time that it should take for you to walk in the manifestation of those celebrations that are coming into your life, the time will be very short because of speed that has come upon your life. And today we want to pray. We want to pray. What is it that you're desiring your life today? 
just believe for that thing. As I pray, just begin to focus that thing that you're desiring, that the Father is going to answer your prayer today. Believe and receive. Receive it. Receive it. It is yours. Let us pray. Ancient of days, oh God, we bless your name. We glorify you. There is none like you, oh God. You are so wonderful. Oh God, you are so good. You are amazing, Father. We love you. You loved us whilst we were still sinners. You loved us. And you gave us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh God. We are reminded of the time when the Lord Jesus Christ was at the wedding in Cana. The mother of Jesus was asking questions. And Lord, it looked as if those questions were not being answered. But oh God, you are eternal and your mind is spirit. And so there are things of the spirit that we may not understand today. But Father, I pray that your people will understand as they continue to grow in your power in your love and your might through the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you care about our day-to-day -day things. This is why the Lord was present at that wedding. You care about our day-to-day -day life, things that seem small, things that seem light and little. Father, you care. You care because you created us. You created your people. You love them. This is why you send Jesus Christ for them, to die for them. It's because you love them, oh God. You love your people, oh God, with an everlasting love. You love your people, oh God, with a love that cannot be measured. Oh God, help them to understand your love, the depth, the height, the width, the length of it. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that they will not be afraid. They will not be afraid to come into your presence and ask for little things that are temporary, the temporary things of life. Father, that they will not be dismayed or embarrassed. They will not be shamed by the enemy. In the name of Jesus, no more shame. No more shame. No more shame. No more false humility. No more false humility. In the name of Jesus, walk, 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 walk with boldness, walk with boldness, walk in your true identity in Christ, walk in your true nature, the nature of a king and a priest in the name of Jesus. Let the priesthood be renewed, the priesthood, the stones and the foundations of priesthood and kingship. Let they be renewed today by the power of the Holy Spirit a new identity, a new name, a new name, a new name, a new name in the name of Jesus, new identity, a new identity, a new mindset in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Father, the Lord was concerned about things that have to do with eternity, about new wine, about being filled by the Holy Spirit, about being won back to you, O oh God about him being the last Adam, about the hour of trial on the cross. Oh God, he was concerned about you. He was concerned about me. He was concerned about your kingdom. He was concerned, oh God, about your people. He was concerned, oh God, about the things that have to do with eternity. Help your people to understand and to also be concerned as they walk as kings and priests about things that are eternal. That they may know that everything that they need has been provided and they just need to receive, receive it. They need to catch up in their mindsets. Oh God, help them to know that everything that they need, they have it. Father, some of your people today, they are asking for a miracle. They need a miracle. They're at the crossroad, like Mary. They need it to be a miracle of wine. They need to be a miracle that brings joy once more, laughter once more, smiles once more, clarity once more. No more pain, no more heartbreak. Father, you gave us the Lord Jesus Christ that we may have life and life in abundance. Father, I pray for an abundance. Give your people an abundance, oh God, an abundance, an abundance of the things that they are hoping for, an abundance, an overflow, an overflow, an overflow, an overflow, in the name of Jesus, an overflow. Let there be an overflow, an overflow, an overflow of joy, overflow of laughter, overflow of the things that have to do with life, day-to-day -day life, an overflow. 
in the name of Jesus and even better than they imagined or hoped for. Oh God, you said in your word that we shall see things, things that we have not seen, things that we have not imagined. Father, help them to see those things greater than they hoped for, greater than they imagined. Oh God, let them walk in the reality of their dreams, reality of their goals and plans, reality of their desires according to your will, reality of their passions according to your will. Father, no more embarrassment, no more embarrassment in the name of Jesus. No more embarrassment, no more shame, no more shame in the name of Jesus. No more shame, no more shame. Let boldness come in place. Boldness. Let boldness be the glue. Put things back into place. Boldness. Confidence. Confidence in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confidence in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders that are taking place in the lives of your people. Father, let them not be ashamed to celebrate. Father, help them. Do not be ashamed to speak out of your goodness. Help them to not be ashamed, O oh God, of your power and your love. Help them to not be ashamed, O oh God, as they walk in the realm of loaves and no longer scraps and breadcrumbs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so faithful. God is so faithful. And God just wants you to just marvel. He wants you to marvel as you discover facets of Him. Facets of His glory. Facets of His goodness. This is why I come here. My role is to be an exhorter, a messenger. That is my role. To encourage His people. And be encouraged. God loves you. And He's working it out for your good today. God bless you. Take care. Bye.